Welcome to my third video in this series. So this is kind of detailing that training that's going into a sub 230 attempt. So over these three weeks, there's a 10K that doesn't go very well and the Great North Run that gets run in 72 minutes. So it goes very well. You've got the sessions that are going into it and all that build up and how it's all gone along the way. <laughs> So thanks for sticking with me. Um, so let's talk about week seven. So this is the seventh week of that build up into a, a sub 230 attempt. And how did it go? Interesting. So I kind of came out of the previous week and I just felt a bit wrecked. So I was really just struggling to get much done. Um, I'd, I'd got my session, it wasn't until the Wednesday, thankfully. So I kind of got this very big, very daunting session, only one session this week. And it was the um, like a Renato Canova session. So I'll. I'll Talk about it a bit so what what kind of sessions are quite a few of them is this one's where you go over your threshold so you're working very hard and then you recover but you don't recover recover by walking you're recovering at just below your threshold pace um it's a very daunting session so i i kind of was kind of nervous about this feeling like crap anyway so i went out on the so i did my, my runs on the monday then on, i put that run off from the tuesday to the wednesday Went out on the cheese. I just wasn't feeling it. I started doing the warm up and I felt so miserable doing the warm up. I actually just binned it off and uh, went home. So I did a total of like half a mile. Not brilliant. You'll see that on the weekly figures. And okay, so what did I do instead? I'm, kind of, I'm sat in my running kit and thinking, I can't just take my running kit off without running. I've got to do something. I've got to do something that feels a little bit. I can't, I can't keep on feeling this rubbish. Just, just try and pump myself up. I'm feeling really tired. I had a rough night the night before with the kids actually. I think my daughter woke me up for some ridiculous reason. So what can I do about this? And I did um, a session called Monaghetti Fartlek. I think it's quite a famous session. I'll try and link to it below. Steve Monaghetti, Australian runner, and his sessions, 90 seconds hard, 90 seconds recovery, two of those, minute hard, minute recovery, four of those, 30 seconds hard, 30 seconds recovery, four of those, 15 seconds, 15 seconds. Total 20, it's 20 minutes of work, and it's really only 10 minutes of fast running, but what it is such a good one. It touches on a lot of paces. And it's just really quite nice to sort of, you run, you feel fast, you feel good. So I did that and I had a great run. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, the performance was quite good. The paces were great. And so I really got into that as I intended. So I came out at the end of Wednesday night. So I've done some miles, but I did that session and I felt good about myself. And it's what it is. Sometimes you've got to go back to the ones that you know and the things that you enjoy. So this really daunting Canova session, I kind of just kicked can down the road till the Thursday or the Friday. Kind of Friday is what I'm thinking. I know I'd got to do my long run on the Saturday, so that's a bit daunting, but stick with it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine with that. So at least I got something done on the Wednesday, did a run on the Thursday, kind of got the miles in, like 10 miles, whatever it was. And then on the uh, Friday, did that Canova session. So Canova sessions, yeah, up, dipping over and, above, over and under your threshold. So what flight was that for me? Well, the hard, 2K on, 1K off, I'll put the splits up, and 2K on, 5.35 target, 1K recovery, okay, well, what's the 535 pace is on, what's off? 605, 610, so this is a fast pace now. So my marathon pace at Rex, so I ended up about 548 a mile, 545 a mile. So this is kind of marathon effort because that this isn't race day. So I'm just doing this around the local park and I'm using the park run markers. They've got kilometer markers, it's great park run, great park, love the place. So they've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, and it's kind of two loops effectively. One of them is slightly long because you don't quite finish and start in the same spot. So I end up with 1K that's a little bit long, but it's the pace that matters. But I could just not think about the watch. Okay, I'm at kilometre two. I've got to go to kilometre four hard, then around to the finish, and re well, actually the start on, on the recovery, and then you go again until number two. So I could just kind of turn my brain off and just focus on running at that pace. How did it go? It, it was daunting to do it. I saw a friend on the warm up and I just spent 15 minutes talking to him. I didn't want to run. I just didn't want to do this really scary session. But I went and did it. And so yeah, I put the bits and pieces up. So satisfying to do. So it's six lots of that, total of 18K of work, adding the warm ups. You'll see the um, stats that are on here. It ended up like a 57 minute, 57, 30, 10 miles. That's, that's correct. I think that's a PB for me. Or well, not far off it. Absolutely crazy levels, but that's why it's so daunting. So really satisfying to have done but really quite scary to do and one that I kind of put off and put off. And then next day, Saturday, long run. So it was meant to be a 20 mile progressive. We didn't have time because we were going out. So I kind of had to cut it short a little bit. So what did we do? It was um, 
30 miles thereabouts progressing through I've put the pace you can see it picking up and then I finished with the park run to try and give myself a little bit of extra something to go at and ended up yeah 16 then ended a bit of a cool down not not great but it's okay I did 16 miles there were 16 hard miles overall it's a decent week and then leading into a race week so I've kind of come off it and I'm going into it again so not so bad and the other thing that arrived or I've got is the um fancy Morton gels so Morton Morton the sort of Kipchoge uh, sub two attempt the packaging feels very weird but these are going to be not used for the Wilm but for the Great North which I've got in a couple of weeks so I'm quite quite looking forward to seeing if these are actually any good and if it's just hype because I thought the Vaporfly when they brought those out it's just hype I've been here before I've seen the Adidas boost I know how this works some marginal gain in some theoretical percentage of hey it's a bit more bouncy but you know a whole new expensive pair of shoes it's, it's just rubbish it's, it's not real and then actually you try the Vaporfly and you see the records fall and you start to realize I oh, know wait there, there's something in that so is this um, Adidas boost you know nice to have great um, nice addition I actually love the Adidas boost shoes but I'm not sure they're any faster or is this kind of a vapor fly like game changer I mean I'm hoping at £2.70 a gel is a game changer but we'll see just to say if you are getting something from these videos please do hit like subscribe if you want something new and differently please do tell me in the comments there's nothing in this for me I've not got a patron I've not got anything to sell I've not got an only fans it's just um, doing these for a bit of fun so it'd be interesting to see what people are looking for and hopefully add something of value so we're on to week eight. So what happened week eight? Coming off that previous week of training, heading into a race week. So the Wilm 10K. Um, bit of a jog on the Monday, as always feeling pretty tired from the weekend. Heading into Tuesday. So on Tuesday, met up with a friend and did 20 by a minute in the park. So this was quite a big session, 20 by a minute on, minute off. And I got some footage, took the camera down and recorded us both, trying to keep an eye on our form, how we're doing, how we handled it and how we look when you're in it. If you see any obvious kinks, you can try and start to work on those. So I have got a bit of footage I'll try and put on and um, the aim was to try and do all 20 in under five minute miling. That's pretty hard um, for me anyway. So we did do that. Kept most of them under 450. There were a few that were under 440. They were into the wind and a few that were approaching five. So they were into the wind, the other ones were wind behind you. So just lots of laps of the park, just running round and round in circles. So 20 of those went really well, really quite happy after that. Um, did it in my New Balance Rebel shoes, which I'm really starting to like. They seem to have the benefits of flats, but at the same time give you a little bit more cushioning than you get from a flat. So they kind of work for those longer sessions. So yeah, I've, I was at first a bit like, what, what's the point of these? They're not, they're not kind of general shoes. They're not race shoes, they're not racing flats. What, what, is, what is this about? But actually, okay, I think I get it now. So uh, really enjoyed that one. That, that was a really good session. Day of jog, and then at this point, I took the kids to the seaside. So I left mum with baby, and I took the other two. And we went to the seaside for a few years. That really kind of disrupted my routine. I got my sister there as well, so I could get out for a couple of runs, but not really. So I, I kind of eating not brilliantly. So we, like, we stopped off at McDonald's on the way down. I think I ate like 30 nuggets. Um, and then you're kind of taking out picnics, so I'm carrying a backpack and we're having sandwiches everywhere, maybe with chips and ice cream and things. So it was really nice, we had a great few days. Probably not the best prep leading into a, to a run at the weekend, so I did take a rest day kind of leading up to it all and thought, well, you know, I did 15.29. Well, what's the next thing is I've done 32.20 earlier in the year, 32.23. You've got to go for it, right? You've got to aim for 31 something. Why Why not? Why wouldn't you? So the race day came around. I felt so relaxed. I don't think I remember the last time I felt so relaxed on a race day, which is all good. And um, really shows I'm getting back to that, kind of used to that being a part of the routine, which is nice because the first few races we've had, I've not, not enjoyed them as much. So that was good. Um, went off. There was a little group going for that sort of time-ish. So it was like, well, let's stick to it. Um, another one of the runners from Derby AC kind of committed to that pace then about 3k he kind of well two and a half k really stuck on it so after that burst you have at the start he really went with it and it's like well I can settle back and you uh, you know what will happen then is you'll come in at about 33 15 maybe you'll, you'll run okay but what's the point you've run faster than that three weeks ago you ran faster than that earlier in the year why not go for it uh, as the Welsh runner says find out you know find out what happens so I, I found out and uh, go big or go home, right? And I went home. So about 4K, just couldn't hold on to it. And 
just suddenly I'm then like back with the previous group and then I'm off the back of that one and it was a very long run from there. I remember looking at my watch about eight, nine K and uh, looked down and it's six minute miling. So that's quick for some races, but when you start out at kind of five ten, it's not good. So I just went backwards. I put up the stats for, for everything, obviously, all the stats from Fetch Everyone. So you'll see those appear and it just just didn't go well. Some nice photos, but ultimately, um, yeah, it did, didn't didn't go my way on that one so I kind of came home a bit, bit grumpy we had Chinese that night so it was fine and I did a weight session in the afternoon just to kind of figure that my body hasn't worked as hard as I wanted it to so although it was a hard effort and my heart rate was high I didn't really do that much I didn't really wear myself out so I thought well actually the legs could handle a weight session let's get that in now because I've kind of had to skip that for this week so overall quite disappointed but not the end of the world you know the fitness is probably there from those previous races I've had so well you had a go and this time it didn't work out if you always succeed it means you're probably not pushing hard enough and not pushing those limits but um, yeah there's, there's no way you can class today as a success apart from maybe the effort but the the result was not what I wanted never mind so then we come into week nine so I've just come off a not great race kind of gone for gone out swinging and uh, go big or go home and ended up home so kind of feeling a bit battered did the uh, the weights on the Sunday into week nine so kind of steady um, recovery run so I took my daughter first week of school so take her there in the running buggy jogging her there and back just getting a few miles in each day kind of really helped and then kind of it pushed back the session till the Wednesday rather than Tuesday kind of Thursday Tuesday Friday taking a little bit of extra time to recover because uh, it's not that I need it, it's that I could, couldn't run fast. You know, coming off a race, there's no way I'm gonna be going hard on a Tuesday, there's, it's just too fried. So uh, on the Wednesday I went out and tried to take the pressure off a little bit by doing the session on grass. So I'll put on a picture, but I just, I found like there's um, opposite my old office, there's like a little square of grass, maybe 200 meters by 300 meters. It's a park and I ran laps. So I just must've gone around there 20, 30 times. Session meant to be five by three, three minutes, five by two minutes, five by one minute. Didn't really have the time for that. I was just kind of squeezing it in between meetings. So kind of went out, five minutes of warm up max, and then just running loops and loops. And paces were a bit slower than they meant to be, but um, I ended up doing four times three minutes because I didn't have the time to do five times three minutes. And then five by two, five by one, finishing kind of right at the office and then straight back to work, uh, pretty much just sort of threw on a jumper over the top of my kit to get through that and then had a shower after. So on those kind of looking at paces that sort of like mid fives, um, just kind of really building a bit of confidence, but also not um, trying to, try to like take it off the roads and avoid beating up my legs too much. After a race on the tarmac, they're a bit sore. So do it on the grass, maybe try and to take the pressure off where you expect to be a few seconds slower because I'm running on bends on grass. So it doesn't really matter that, that it's slower than what I'd want it to be. Um, then just sort of a couple miles through. So leading up to the Great North Run, but having had one kind of bad race, not wanting to put too much pressure on that one and kind of taper down for it and expect to do well. So I thought, well, you know what? I'll just kind of train through to it. So in the end, as you'll see with the, the numbers I put up, it's, it's like a 70 mile week, 72 mile week, once you count the race in there. And there's probably a few miles as well that are kind of not logs. It's probably more like 75. So just trying to train through, so I'm getting plenty of training. And so I kind of went out the next day and one of my club mates was doing his tempo run. So he was meant to do like 10 miles at low sixes. So I said, well, I'll, I'll keep your company, pace it for you. It's a good medium long run for me. So I think it was 6.30, 6.40 in the end we did. And I'm doing eight miles, just sort of taking him through that. And that was that was nice actually, just sort of getting out. And it's amazing how some days kind of running at eight minute miles feels hard, whereas that day feeling 6.30 is, well, this is easy. Um, quite enjoyed that. So just a nice little run out. So I'll, I'll not bother putting the stats up, but maybe I will and then kind of Friday run, Saturday morning, junior park run with the kids, so um, pushed my daughter, well, park run, but um, did push my daughter for the first little bit, let her run for a bit, push her for a bit, let her run for a bit. So we had a lot of fun and just loosened me up, ready for a three hour drive up to Newcastle, still with my friends, then did the Great North Run. So to summarize, a fantastic kind of performance in, the, in a sense, a fantastic result, I think, great result really good result, perhaps not fantastic, uh, 72.15, so I'd said I wanted to be 72 low to 71 high is kind of where people sit when they do a sub 230, 
And if you look on Power of 10, go back over the previous years, kind of rank it and look at all the people that did 229, 228, they're all in that range or mostly in that range. It's rare to find someone that does a 73, 74, then converts that to a sub 230. There are some, and there are also some that will do like a 68 and then kind of come in with a 229. They probably had a bad day at the office, to be honest. They should be doing better than that if you look at how talented they are. So I kind of want to be in that range. And at the same time, I'd, I'd kind of had a big, um, or the Americans call it a strikeout the week before where you kind of a really poor race and a really not fun experience so I thought well let's let's try a bit different and so I'm going to go out at the pace I know I can sustain and um, just kept that going for the first kind of probably 45 minutes without having to try and dig too deep and if people kind of came past me let them go you know don't try and do anything silly by trying to stay onto them and then at about seven miles a group came past it's like no I need to sort of start digging in now so I kind of tucked onto them and kind of went with that all the way through then kind of got stronger at about 10 11 miles and kind of pushed on a little bit to the finish really tough course a lot of ups and downs so really undulating i don't think any part of it was flat so you really found that it was hard to keep that rhythm in the same way you have to sort of pay attention to it and think about what you're doing because it's it's up or it's down it's up or it's down and you're up onto a motorway slip road so i think the course was okay the conditions were perfect like 13 14 degrees is when world records are set and i can see why it's just so nice to run in not humid slight cross breeze that for a little bit was in your face but for most of it, it's just a non-factor you kind of really only when you went across at the very top of the course did you really notice it but even then it, it wasn't too bad just no basically no wind what more can you want from that so you know there's no excuses it was a tough course but it wasn't terrible so even though there was an a lot of elevate i'll put the elevation profile up even though there was quite a bit of um elevation throughout the course it was all runnable so all the inclines you could keep on running it wasn't kind of those really steep ones where you kind of really just reduced to almost not quite power walking but sort of like grinding up it no you were still running it's just you were running 20 30 40 seconds slower and on the downs you suddenly look down at your watch and you're doing kind of like 20 seconds faster than you'd want to be doing for your pace for the race Made it a bit harder to judge, but it wasn't at all bad. Um, so I got the result I was looking for. If I'd really gone for it, could I have gone faster? Probably. Might I also have blown, potentially. So very pleased with what was a solid performance, um, getting it done, kind of quite workmanlike. Went out, knew what I needed to do, and did it. So without any drama, just went out and got the result I was looking for so now into a couple of big weeks and I'll do another video in a few weeks when the train's really finished before the taper starts and we'll then see kind of where things are at because I'm I'm sort of now yeah I'm feeling good about it all but at the same time I'm not um overconfident you're kind of so worn at this point where some days it, you know it's just getting out is a struggle other days you kind of go out for a rep and it's just flying and they're just easily coming so I did the 20 by a minute I was kind of easily dropping in those uh sub five minute one one minute reps it's just kind of like well, what's what's this is this is this is fine you know the next day kind of 8 15s is feeling like a real grind so there's real ups and downs you're kind of really feeling the accumulated fatigue at this point so I'm looking for that to kind of disappear in in that taper week and yeah two more hard weeks of training so what's that that's like five sessions I've got to get done I can do that. I can do five more. I can do five more. I can do five more. I can do another 170, 180 miles, whatever it ends up being the last couple of weeks. We can do this. So stay tuned and I'll do one in a couple of weeks.